morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Digital Manufacturing Business Pitch Event. It's uh, great to see so many of you here today. Um, first of all, can I ask people to set their microphones to mute uh, in conventional Zoom protocol? Uh, obviously, don't forget when you come to pitch to unmute yourself. Um, the event, uh, if you haven't gathered, is being recorded. Uh, so if people don't want to show off their current office setting or even their current office attire, then please switch your cameras off. Um, and we will send out a link uh, to the video after the event. So obviously, if you missed anyone or wanted to catch up on anything that people have been saying, then you'll be able to do that through uh, the, uh, the, the video link. Well, there's obviously in the Northwest, we have great strengths and a great heritage in manufacturing going back over decades and even centuries. And, and obviously in recent times, we've seen a surge in the development and application of industrial digitization technologies uh, to support this sector. And that essentially is what this event is, is about, is in terms of bringing uh, many of you here today who I think, he, I think he transmuted himself. John, you're on mute. Got, uh, and I'm just unmuting myself now. I think Sue did, caught me out there. Okay. So let me just uh, get back on track. So great solutions and services that are there for, uh, uh, for organizations in the Northwest to be sharing with each other, looking for collaborative opportunities, business opportunities. That's what this event is about. And as I said, the Northwest has got a major focus on this, and it's probably worthwhile flagging that uh, November the 9th to the 13th in Liverpool, uh, or we normally would have had in Liverpool, the Smart Factory Expo and Digital Manufacturing Week. That is obviously virtual this year. So again, if you haven't uh, looked at that as an opportunity to make new business contacts, to showcase uh, some of your solutions and products then, please take a look at that and I'll uh, put a link on the chat thread. So the event has been co-hosted by three organizations, Made Smarter, which is a government program to help Northwest manufacturers innovate and adopt industrial digitization technologies, along with developing the skills and leadership needed to do this. Uh, and if you want more information, go to the website madesmarter.uk. Uh, secondly is LCR 4.0 Start, which is a program for Liverpool City Region SMEs to gain a competitive edge through the development of practical strategies for its effective digital adoption. And if you want more information about that program, go to the LCR4.uk website. And finally, ourselves at SciTech Darsbury. Uh, we're a national science and innovation campus and home to around 150 technology companies, from startups to major global players like IBM, Hitachi, Ansys, and Croda. Home to the Harji Center, which is part of the Science and Technology Facilities Council, with world-class technology in areas like high-performance computing, simulation, big data analytics, and AI. With partnerships with Siemens and Atos around their industrial digitalization accelerator, and with the University of Liverpool's Virtual Engineering Center, driving digital adoption across aerospace, automotive, health, nuclear, and many other sectors. And we've got a glowing cluster now of around 20 companies working in industrial digitization technologies, and you're gonna hear from some of those today. It's a collaborative community, with 70% of companies collaborating with other organizations on the site, generating nearly 10 million in sales and cost savings uh, last year. And we provide a range of offices, laboratories, workshops, and access to visualization, simulation, and prototyping facilities on the site. And we've got a technology network of around 5,000 people across the Northwest with monthly network events, which are not surprisingly online at the moment. And I'll ask my colleague, Paul Trelaw, just to put our contact details on the chat thread and the link to Network Hub, our technology network, if that's of interest to anybody. So in terms of the format of the event, it's a 90 second pitch to focus on who you are and what you do, but also more importantly, what do you have to offer and what do you need? So think about how it can be relevant to the people in the webinar today in terms of what do they need that you might have and what, and what could they offer you 
that is actually particularly important for you to develop and grow your business. Or maybe they know somebody in their network that you want to connect with. So when you're speaking, you will be highlighted, so please make sure your video is switched on so people know what you look like. Uh, Luke Vanstone is going to be in charge of timekeeping and will sound a buzzer after 30 seconds or when 30 seconds are, le are left to go. Luke, if you want to give us a demo. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then there'll be another sound when your 90 seconds is up. Luke, if you can give us a demo on that as well. Did you hear that, John? So I was saying, can you give us a demo on when the, of the sound when the 90 seconds is up? Just give us that one more time. Okay, and after that, the proverbial virtual hand will come onto your shoulder. And of course, our last resort is we will just mute you. Um, we've got 19 pitches signed up already, so there is a little space for anyone who hasn't signed up to pitch and think and realize now that this is too good an opportunity to miss. So if you would like to pitch, then please just put a message in the chat thread and one of the team will pick that up and we will add you on to the end of the list. Now we will go in alphabetical order, so hopefully everybody has received one of these uh, by email. Uh, the latest version was sent out this morning uh, because we had a, a two uh, new names, a couple of new names uh, to add to the list here. So we'll go in alphabetical order by first name, but before Alex of Blink Solutions and Andrew of Resolve Robotics start to get too nervous at this point, don't worry, we are going to have Dan Bradley of the Virtual Engineering Center and LCR 4.0 start and Alan Cam of the Made Smarter programs who are going to go first and show us how it's done. So keep your list of pitches because obviously that will help you just uh, to work out who is pitching and who might be of particular interest to you um, as we're going through all the pitches. If you are interested in anyone who has pitched and want to follow up with them, Again, please use the chat function. You can actually um, email to the group or you can email uh, or chat direct to the, uh, the individual. We'll take a little bit of time out uh, partway through proceedings where Sarah Martin Tyrrell of the Virtual Engineering Center will bring us up to speed on anything that's going through the chat thread in terms of kind of uh, great connections that have been made, ideas, any additional information that might be of value to people. So if there is someone whose name you didn't catch and you want to connect with them, then please follow up through the chat thread uh, or after the event, asking myself, Luke, Alan Cam from Made Smarter or Dan Bradley or Sarah Martin Tyrrell from the Virtual Engineering Center and we'll see what we can do to help. So hold on to your coffee, tea or beverage of choice. This will be fast, furious and of course it will be fun. So first up, um, Dan Bradley from the Virtual Engineering Centre and LCR 4.0 start. Thanks a lot, John. Good morning, everybody. Just for those of you who don't know, uh, the Virtual Engineering Centre exists on the Desbury campus as a centre of excellence to support uh, digital engineering and digital manufacturing, uh, especially here in the Northwest. Projects can be funded directly through our clients, but we also have funded support available through our ERDF programs, such as the LCR4 start program that is involved in this talk. And that's being delivered with our partners, John Moores, STFC, and the Growth Platform. We've worked with firms of all sizes from blue chips like Bentley and Airbus through to startups just in their first year of operations. In terms of what we actually do, I mean, most of you will be aware of what Industrial Revolution 4, um, L, uh, IR 4.0 and the various other names is R. But what we do is try and bridge the gap between ideas and adoption. So we see our unique selling point as being that we have engineers and software developers on our staff, which are there to help companies de-risk their uh, potential adoption of solutions. So between the idea and the delivery or the investment or the adoption, we exist to be an independent helping hand for that process. We're also no longer just aiming at manufacturers. We are available for any business in the area to come to us and seek independent advice or 
advice through our partners. So if you're based in the Liverpool City region and you're considering a digital adoption, you're considering how your processes could be modernised, you're perhaps even wondering what all this stuff is and how you would like to take it forward, please get in touch. We have a funded programme, LCR 4 Start, that you can start today. If you're not in that region, we have other ERDF funded programmes hopefully coming along line over the next uh, month or so. And so by all means, get in touch if you're in Cheshire, Warrington, just pick up the phone and see what you're doing. We are a public sector organisation that exists to help businesses gain the productivity increases and the profitability increases of digital adoption. So if that sounds of interest to you, I'll put my details in the comments window. You've seen our website's already been highlighted. Just get in touch. It's not going to cost you anything and we're not here to sell anything. So we can support you as you wish. Thanks, John. That's great, Dan. Thank you. Uh, well done. First pitch, a great start there. Um, if you haven't connected with the Virtual Engineering Centre and you don't know about the LCR 4.0 start, then this is a great uh, point to do that. Um, some fantastic uh, expertise, facilities, great relationships with some uh, well-known uh, manufacturing blue chip organisations. And as Dan said, some fantastic funded programmes that are there available to support SME companies, um, not only across the Liverpool City region, but also into areas like Cheshire and Warrington. So if that sounds of interest, please follow up with Dan Bradley from the Virtual Engineering Centre. Next up is Alan Cam from the Made Smarter programme. Alan, over to you. Good morning. Can you see me? Good morning. Uh, Made Smarter, um, as we've touched on uh, at the very beginning, is a government pilot, uh, government funded pilot aimed at manufacturing SMEs in the Northwest. We offer fully funded impartial advice to SMEs looking at investing or developing digital technologies within their organisation. We can offer up to 50% match funding on Industry 4 projects, so uh, up to a total of £20,000. We will put £20,000 in, 50%, up to um, so a total of uh, £40,000 in total, and that's hardware and software. We will help you to develop a uh, support to develop a digital roadmap for your business. We also offer fully funded internship, digital technical uh, internship, 480 hours, works out about £12 an hour. They can help develop your digital strategy as well as introduce technologies and integrate them within your business processes. We also have a Made Smarter Leadership Programme which is a subsidised course that helps uh, manufacturing leaders improve their productivity through the integration of new digital tools. So all of these three things can be taken um, as, a, as a package um, to complement each other, or you can take them separately. So for instance, you can have um, an internship, um, take an internship within your business to work on a project, or you can have a project from us that uh, uh, the internship facilitates, or you can just go on the leadership programme, uh, mix and match. Um, brand new website. Um, sorry, <laughs> that went really quick on the thought. Thanks, Luke. Just finish off, Alan. Thank you. Brand new website. Um, went live at the beginning of September. We've got a technology suppliers directory on there. So what I'm looking for really is today is any manufacturer looking to uh, implement digital technology. Any inter if you're looking at an internship, if you are one, you know of one, contact us, or if you're a supplier to contact us. Um, I'm open to all requests on LinkedIn. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, it's important just to kind of catch at the end, end of what the May Smarter programme is about. Fantastic opportunities. I mean, Alan talked about £20,000 of funding for any projects that you might be working on, or maybe companies that you're working with. You might be a supplier to a company who's working on a particular uh, digital adoption project and maybe you can be part of the solution and here's some great funding that could uh, help facilitate that. Internship opportunities. So this is relevant to organisations that are manufacturers but also organisations that are providing services and solutions to manufacturers. So if you're not familiar with Made Smarter, please follow up uh, with Alan today. So on to our list and first up is Alex Jessup from Blink Solutions. Thanks, John. Um, $19 million worth of savings in inventory in the first 12 months, allowing a business to grow by double over three years with no headcount growth, 
70% reduction in overdue debts for a freight company. At Blink Solutions, we combine world-class technology, innovation, and process expertise from a variety of industries to give you the tools to deliver these types of business outcomes. We offer business intelligence, customer relationship management, transport management systems, and NHS enterprise modules, as well as custom bespoke development. At the core of our products is the ability to give you end-to-end real-time visibility of your business. Our, our, our IT can integrate with any system and cope with any quality or format of data. We understand that to successfully and quickly deliver your business outcomes, you need to maximize user adoption and business buy-in. And that's why our technology is based on a simple, clear to understand visual user experience tailored to your business. Not only, giving the, not only do we, does our approach allow you to get, deliver your outcomes quickly, we focus on leveraging what you've got so you don't have to write off your existing IT investments. Blink Solutions was founded by business people who'd worked in industry for a number of years and were frustrated with the traditional IT experience. We're passionate about delivering a different experience for your business. We work in partnership with you to identify your target business outcomes, identify the insight required to deliver those outcomes and provide you with the data to deliver those outcomes. Our agile approach ensures that you get a minimum, minimum viable product in your hands within weeks, not months. And I look forward to speaking to businesses to understand how we deliver tangible, tangible business benefits for you. That's great, Alex. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, I know Blink Solutions very well. They're at SciTech Darlesbury. Uh, you know, a very, very exciting company. It's been phenomenal to, to see the growth and development of that business and doing some incredible work across a, a whole variety of uh, sectors uh, into manufacturing, logistics, healthcare, and so on, and, and with some very novel and innovative approaches. So, um, if you see that there's an opportunity in terms of either what uh, Blinks have got to offer is uh, of uh, relevance to you or potential interest around partnership opportunities, then please follow up uh, with Alex Jessup of Blink Solutions. Excellent. So next up is Andrew Luda-Smith of Result Robotics. Andrew. Hello. Hello to you. So at uh, Resolve Robotics, we are a technology development company and we deliver bespoke robotics instrumentation software solutions for heavy industries. And that's primarily focused around deployment inspection of hazardous environments. So we do a lot of work with uh, Sellafield and we also work with oil and gas companies. Uh, now, you might be wondering what the relevance to this is. Well, uh, because our focus on robotics is smaller, smarter, and cheaper, this has left us with a fairly significant manufacturing challenge. Uh, we have a lot of small light assembly work that needs doing to, uh, to be able to deliver our solutions at scale. So we've got funded development to work on this solution. So we're developing a modular manufacturing solution for light assembly. It's low cost, it's rapidly reconfigurable, so we can swap between building different, uh, different robots. It's versatile and resilient, and it's designed specifically for small SMEs to use. The individual modules are plug and play, and we have a software interface that enables virtual design and automated uh, reconfiguration. So I'm interested in talking to potential end users, uh, investors in this manufacturing technology, and we're also a very high growth company. We've got funding to take on at least another two to three full-time positions. Um, so if there's anyone interested in either technically uh, helping us deliver that work or commercially uh, various auxiliary functions that are needed, uh, we're interested in talking to those people. Thank you. Andrew, that's great. And within your 90 seconds, fantastic. So really mm. exciting. Um, lots going on by the sounds of it that resolve robotics. So modular manufacturing solutions there. Uh, and Andrew's interested in connecting people who want those solutions or interested in evaluating those solutions. Investors who want to invest in the company and actually people who want to be part of the, the journey that Andrew and his colleagues are on as well. So if any of that is a fit for you, please get in touch with Andrew Luda-Smith of Resolve Robotics. Uh, next up is Batsurai Maguti of Fit Factory. Batsurai, over to you. Good morning, all. 
I'm Batsy, I'm an account manager here at Fit Factory Technology. We develop off-the-shelf advanced manufacturing ERP, MRP, and production control software solutions for the automotive, aerospace, subcontract manufacturing, nuclear, health, and metal finishing sectors, among others, supporting your compliance with the industry accreditations of those sectors. To complement and augment our ERP solutions, we, have, we also have additional modules which include auditing, continuous improvement, data capture, supply chain management, calibration and asset management, and business intelligence. The key benefit of the Fit Factory suite of technologies is that it gives you a visibility of, of your data across your entire manufacturing value chain, allowing your business the ability to make data-driven data decisions. Digitizing your process data with Fit Factory will enable your business to improve productivity, save on waste, and increase turnover. Fit Factory, making your business digitally fit for, for the fourth industrial revolution. That was very polished, that's it. 60 seconds on the dot. So, um, Fit Factory, ERP, MRP software solutions, all about data visibility and how that can help drive productivity within your process. So, if that strikes a chord for your business or for businesses that you're working with, please follow up with uh, Batsy Maguti of Fit Factory. Uh, next, we have Daniel Horrocks of Samson VT. Perfect. Thank you, John. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm Dan Horrocks. I'm the head of sales within uh, within Samsung BT. Um, so we're, we're a technology company in, in Manchester, and we specialise in working within the, the manufacturing and engineering sectors. And specifically, our product has, has been designed and developed to help tackle problems around after sales, uh, through life support and virtual training. So the software platform we have replaces paper-based technical publications by creating this immersive and interactive 3D model of your particular product. Um, so it doesn't matter whether that is a, a, a robot, a car, a generator, it really doesn't matter. If it's made in CAD, we can help. Um, we've got two main products within our range. So we have Samsung Core and Samsung Analytics. Uh, Samsung Core is uh, the replacement of static paper, PowerPoints, PDF publications on how to fix things and how to optimize things. So using our drag and drop system, you can import any CAD file and you've got access to a 3D model. Um, Samsung Analytics is the kind of hot topic of conversation at the moment. Um, so this is our very clever artificial intelligence and machine learning platform. So we take your data and we run various processes to present back meaningful insights. So we're working with a number of companies at the minute um, to help optimize machine performance. So I'd be really keen to speak with anyone about automating mandrolic processes uh, or handling and understanding large complex data sets. And it doesn't matter what format it's in, if it's in a real mess, that's better for us. Uh, so we can do a proof of concept project to show you how, how we can help you. Um, so yeah, really happy to connect with anyone who wants us to look at their data um, or virtual training and, and 3D animations. Thank you, cheers. That's great, thanks uh, Dan. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, Dan Horrocks of Samsung VT. So we're into the world of immersive technology and artificial intelligence as well. Um, so if you're interested in terms of kind of the immersive technology around virtual training or this new AI platform, if you've got complex, messy data sets, then Dan and his colleagues just love those. So if that's something which you're grappling with, then please go and have a chat with Dan Horrocks of Samsung VT. And now we move to the, the, the world of a, a well-known uh, global business, uh, IBM and Deb Sahota. Hi everyone. So thank you, John, for that fabulous introduction. Um, so as uh, John mentioned earlier, I work for IBM and we are based at the Hartree Centre in Daresbury. Uh, it, we are specifically IBM Research, so we are quite different to perhaps the perception of, of the big corporate IBM that you may have. Um, we've got a team of around about 35 researchers at Daresbury and they link into a much bigger team of over 3,000 researchers in IBM worldwide. Um, our hotspots are all around um, artificial intelligence, digital twinning, modelling, simulation. Uh, we've spent the last five years at the Hartree Centre working with a wide range of companies from small ones to large corporates and we are all about 
um, introducing innovation through our research. So what we have to offer is a team of researchers who work on high performance computing systems at the Hartree Center, who will be focused on a company's particular challenge. What we want to do is to work on that challenge, work with real life data and real life problems so that that gives our researchers the validation that their research is going in the right direction because we're not just doing research for research's sake, we want to get that out there into companies to solve challenges for which there is no off the shelf solution. So there's no software out there on the marketplace. That's what we're aiming to, to fill that need. Um, we are very open to working with companies, SMEs, et cetera, on competitions for funding, uh, innovate competitions, et cetera either as a lead or as a participant in a consortium. And um, we are, um, yeah, we've got a lot of case studies on the kind of projects that we've worked on, including in manufacturing on the Hartree website. Uh, that's, that's great. Thank you very much indeed. Um, it, it's great to hear that, you know, with an organisation, kind of the size and breadth of, of IBM, and in particular the IBM research part of that, uh, that, uh, there's an openness to be working with uh, SMEs, small SMEs that are here in the Northwest. So we've got a great facility with, uh, with IBM Research Laboratory at, at SciTech Darsbury. If you had never thought about talking with Deb and her colleagues and, and seeing what they might be able to do with you, then this is a great opportunity to start that conversation. At this point, we're going to take a short break and hand over to Sarah Martin Tyrrell, who's just going to give us an update in terms of what's going on on the chat thread. Sarah, over to you. Hey, no worries. Hi, everybody. Um, there's no question and answers at the moment. So if anybody does have anything that they want to pose to any of the participant, participants, please do. Um, I can see each picture has been putting their contact details on LinkedIn. So it will be a useful exercise that I save the chat at the end of the, um, at the, end of the event and maybe share that with everybody that participates. That's great. Sarah, thanks very much indeed. So please, uh, any questions, uh, any comments that you have or people you want to get connected to, or even actually if you've worked with one of the pictures and you want to give them a bit of a thumbs up and uh, a recommendation about the great work that they do, please put that onto the chat thread. It's always good to hear about uh, sort of recommendations and referrals from other people in our network. So let's uh, crack on. Next up is John Clements from Metamorphic PR. Morning everyone, uh, John Clements from Metamorphic. Uh, we're a business to business public relations and marketing communications consultancy. Um, actually, we've recently worked with Fit Factory that Batsy introduced earlier on their rebrand activity. So their challenge, as for many companies, was how to make their story really resonate with the manufacturing media and therefore the readership and the manufacturing community. So that's where we come in by understanding your business offer, demonstrating the problems it solves, putting it firmly into the current industry context and translating all of that into a compelling narrative that really works. So if you want successful communications for your business, think about these things. If you're trying to make your company more visible, how creative are you being in capturing attention and outsmarting your competitors? If your company gathers data how are you using it to demonstrate your knowledge and expertise? If, you're, if you understand your customers' pain points, how are you communicating to prove that? And if you have a story that's powerful enough to transcend your business and resonate with a wider audience, then are you telling it? So if your business's profile right now is indistinct, like looking at a picture of a forest, then putting a tiger in that picture will help get you noticed. So remember for your communication, more tiger, less forest. So I'm John Clements from Metamorphic Business Changing Communications. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, very uh, eloquently put there. So this is not just about your technology. You can have great technology, but if you're not getting that message out, if you haven't got the right branding, you haven't got the right communication strategy, you're not using the data intelligence that you've got within your business. Uh, then you're running 
on half a tank, not a full tank. So uh, if that kind of resonates with you, you need the, uh, some expertise to kind of really drive your PR and your marketing communications strategy and, and plans, then please have a conversation with John Clements of Metamorphic PR. Uh, next up is Karen Green of Clarity 4.0 HR. Good morning. Thank you, John. So we know that success of any change initiative is going to be a challenge. So we know around about 70% of all the changes that we try to implement within an organisation will fail. Pretty dim look out, really. That raise is even higher for digital adoptions. So that's over 80% in terms of digital adoptions, which are likely to fail. So these fantastic technologies we're talking about, the massive improvement they'll make in terms of the productivity within the organization will not achieve its potential but I can help. I work with businesses to identify the skills, develop those capabilities, get the mindset, get the leadership in place to make sure that technology is adopted, that you don't turn your back and find out local spreadsheets are being kept, that the initiative is sat and uh, felt as the initiative of the month within the workforce. We want the workforce to be adopting that technology, looking at ways to improve it and making sure that they completely own that technology. So how do we do that? I've been a HR and change management professional now for over 20 years. I've been delivering change and development programs within the manufacturing sector. Thanks, Luke. Uh, within Airbus for over eight years. I've been a freelancer now for 10 years as well. So Clarity HR celebrated its 10 year anniversary. I've worked with global businesses, but more recently with the SME sector. And the last two years have been set up as my business within Engage Digital Adoption. So if you want to partner with me, if you're a tech business and interested in partnering with someone who help to look at the people side and the change management, please get in touch. Equally, if you're looking at implementing the technology, please also contact me as well and I'll help with the people side of that. Thanks a lot. Karen, thanks very much indeed. And, and happy 10th birthday as well to, uh, to Clarity HR. That's fantastic. Well done. Um, yeah, the, the, the whole question about digital adoption yes it's technology but also there's a lot of people issues in there that need to be tackled so um, if you've got challenges about actually getting your uh, team to be adopting new technologies that you want to be bringing into your business or actually maybe you're a technology company that's got a, a great solution for the manufacturing sectors, but actually need some expertise to help kind of tackle the issues about how your client's workforce might adopt that technology, then Karen is definitely the right person to go and have a conversation with. So we've done PR, we've done people, now we go on to the world of Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and Lisa Baldwin. So I'm intrigued, Lisa. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, Lisa Baldwin. I'm a business manager at Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. Um, our purpose at the school is to save lives in poor countries by developing effective interventions that improve human health. So you're probably thinking, what has this got to do with you? Well, we're launching a new programme called Formulated Materials for Infectious Disease Prevention. And one of the work streams will be developing and ultimately manufacturing, sorry about the lights going out, uh, a non-invasive diagnostic. Um, so this is a robust and cost-effective sensor device that we'll be using to measure insecticides on the walls within countries um, in which malaria is endemic. So we're looking to monitor the effectiveness of indoor spraying in these countries. So we're interested in talking to Merseyside SMEs in your network who could help with the prototype development and ultimately the manufacture of these devices. So it's a really exciting opportunity to really make a difference in these endemic countries. So you may be able to produce the housing or some electronic components or help in the manufacture or help with the digital elements within this. So if you think, if you're intrigued and you think this might be of interest, please drop me. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. That's great to hear. I was intrigued and now you've kind of uh, uh, explained it all there. So fantastic opportunity for, for companies in the Liverpool City region uh, to get involved in what is a fantastic project, you know, taking the best technology. Sorry, can I just ask people to put the, the microphones on? on mute. It's okay. Yeah, so great project here. 
taking technology from the Liverpool city region to make a difference to people around the world, uh, you know, people in, you know, really challenging circumstances there. So if you've got some technology or expertise that you think could be relevant to this particular project or Lisa and her colleagues, then please speak to Lisa Bolden. I've just seen she's put her contact details there. So please follow up with Lisa. Next, we move on to Mike Thomas from Tangent Works. Mike, are you there? I'm sure I saw Mike earlier. Mike Thomas, Tangent Works. I think Mike's trying to speak, John, but I don't think he's able to uh, to get the sound through. Uh, Mike, are you struggling to unmute yourself? I don't know, Sue, whether you can unmute Mike. Mike Thomas? Yeah, I'm just looking for him now. Yeah, uh, he's unmuted. All right, Mike, the floor is yours. Or not. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what, we will let Mike uh, sort out his sound issues and come back to him. So if it's okay, let me move over to Neil Wetherill from Factory Talk. Thanks, John. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, absolutely fine, Neil. Super. Um, so Factory Talk's uh, an established technology company headquartered in Bangkok, Thailand, uh, but we've now got offices in the UK. Uh, we provide consultancy and IT solutions to GXP regulated industries. Our products enable manufacturers to digitize their production and progress on the journey to industry and form pharma 4.0. Uh, they're very agile, low effort and very cost effective. Our solutions support SMEs as well as top tier pharma companies with rapid time to value in the weeks rather than months of a typical enterprise solution. We help you to remove paper management problems, reduce compliance errors, and minimize the effort of creating and approving work instructions. And by enabling easy integration with plant sensors and machines, you can realize the benefits and the value of the data in your production uh, activities. Our two main products are Batchline, an electronic batch recording system, which is low cost, low effort, and extremely agile, and Tulip, an IoT enabled platform for creating manufacturing apps without requiring any coding. Our team has an expensive, extensive background in manufacturing, engineering, technology, business change and project delivery, which we can use to support you on problem solving or strategy and leadership challenges. Um, we'd like to talk to any potential clients, so please contact us to discuss any of the above problems or opportunities. Thank you very much. That's perfect. Thanks very much indeed, Neil. So. Uh, uh, technology all the way from the other side of the world, from Thailand, and uh, great to have Neil uh, and his colleagues uh, uh, setting up the UK operation at SciTech Darvry. So all about agile, easy to adopt solutions for the pharmaceutical sector. Um, IoT platform, replacing paper systems into a digital system. So again, if that's of interest to you or maybe to clients that you're working with, and please follow up with Neil Wetherill of Factory Talk. Um, now let's try Mike and let's hopefully get Mike Thomas from Tangent Works. Uh, Hello, John. Can, can you yeah, hear me? We can hear you perfect, Mike. Uh, take it away. Excellent. Well, my apologies for that. Um, yes, my, uh, Mike Thomas from Tangent Works. Uh, we're a Belgian Slovak uh, company with our UK headquarters in SciTech Darsbury. Uh, we were formed in 2014 with a mission to simplify time series analytics. So we use a branch of mathematics known as information geometry to, uh, to automate that process and simpl simplify the, the application of uh, time series analytics. Um, so what do we have to offer? We offer a great technology that's fully automated software analyzing um, time series data for forecasting, anomaly detection, or data insights into, uh, into that time series data. So anything that changes over time, whether it's demand, uh, whether it's a machine's behavior, uh, that's what we, we analyze. Uh, our solution is quick. We typically produce models within seconds or a low number of minutes. It's fully automated. So that the modeling is, um, 
uh, is basically done all through an API and um, and we have a, um, a range of technology partner plugins. It's readable, it's accurate and it is flexible so it applies to all industries and that's actually where it comes to what we need from, from you also. Uh, we're looking for partners who bring knowledge of their industries and um, who, who have a use for time series analytics within their industry. We have market leading um, uh, technology um, and it's about applying that uh, into specific industries where you've got the knowledge uh, ideally with an established route to market but also if you wish to develop a solution specific to your uh, industry then uh, then we can partner with you on that as well I've been Mike Thomas from Tangent Works thank you very much for your time Mike, that's great. Um, yeah, we're really excited about Tangent Works moving to SciTech Data. Uh, I mean, this is, you know, phenomenal technology, you know, in terms of the kind of the analytics space and take it, tackling the challenges about anomaly detection and forecasting, but actually about the speed of this taking place. So uh, uh, if that's something where you're thinking there's technology that Tangent Works have got that could be incorporated uh, into your solutions, and there's potential partnership opportunities, then please talk to Mike Thomas from Tangent Works. Uh, next up, we have Philippa Glover from CNC Robotics. Philippa, you're on mute. That's usually my trick, that is. I could have just been talking to myself, couldn't I? Um, Philippa, can you just turn your sound up a little bit? Um, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it through my... I'm, I'm about to pitch Michael. Um, is that better? That's much better. Yes, yeah. we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, so CNC Robotics is the UK's leading integrator specialising in machining applications. Um, we're based in Liverpool City region opposite Aintree Racecourse. Um, we're a proud Platinum Kuka system partner, having su successfully delivered hundreds of automated systems across multiple industries. Um, uh, the applications that we do are really broad and, and vast. We've recently just been awarded a niche vehicle network project to develop the new Acrim wheel, which is the world's first commercially viable lightweight composite wheel for um, the Gordon Murray um, car. Um, and I'm looking to further grow our network within the composites industry as we see a, a real growth market for advanced machining applications and additive applications using robots. Um, so if there's any help and support that the network can give us to, to help us grow that network in composites, that would be really appreciated. Philippa, you called me That's out it. then. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't ready for you. Fantastic. So um, really interesting. It's a great company, CNC Robotics. If you don't know Philippa and the team there, then please introduce yourselves uh, to her. But uh, interesting opportunity. If you think you've got capabilities, technology solutions that are relevant into the composite space, then Philippa would be very interested to have a conversation with you. I think Dan already has just... Uh, 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 kind of connected on the chat thread there in terms of uh, a potential opportunity there. So that's great to see. That's what we want out of this, this event today. So our next uh, picture is Ruth Kearney from uh, Nightingale HQ. Ruth. Good morning, John. You. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, good morning, everybody. We are Nightingale HQ. We are based in Cardiff in Wales. I'm not from Cardiff, I'm from Dublin. Uh, we are building an AI platform at the moment that helps businesses become AI ready. Uh, what we're doing is we're bringing together key components of AI strategy, AI learning and um, training, and also a marketplace. We have about 60 to 70 data service providers also working with us. The company is led by Stephanie Locke, who's a very experienced AI expert, and data scientists. Today, we're looking to speak with manufacturers and find out their pain points. What we do is we help manufacturers become uh, more efficient and more profitable. We're working with manufacturers at the moment around looking at automation for their sales and marketing. We're working with logistics companies around simple automation uh, quotation process uh, as well. And we're interested in partnering up for funding. So we recently won an Innovate UK grant actually to help companies use uh, automation tools uh, and we chucked one in yesterday with a nice consortium including Domino and Omron. So we are open and looking to collaborate and looking to speak with manufacturers as well. Thank you. 
That's great, Ruth. Uh, great to have you with us uh, um, from uh, from Cardiff. Um, so AI is is kind of the key theme here. If uh, so, if you're a manufacturer that's looking about trying to understand where does AI have an impact on your business, create benefits, solves problems within your business, and Ruth definitely wants to have a conversation with you. Maybe actually you're already working in that whole area around AI and looking at interesting opportunities to partner and engage with Ruth and her colleagues at Nightingale HQ. If any of that fits, then please uh, have a conversation with Ruth. Uh, we're going to take a second break just before I hand over to Sarah, just to kind of give us an update on the uh, chat thread. But can I just check, uh, Emma, is there anyone else who has requested to do a pitch that wasn't on the original list? I'm getting a, a shame. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no one just yet, no. I'll let you know just, if there is. Just bear in mind, everyone, we, we're running to the end. So if uh, you've only got a, a short while to change your mind, um, if you uh, want to do a, uh, a pitch at the end. Um, Sarah, can I hand over to you in terms of what's going on in the chat thread? Absolutely. We do have one question from Dan from Zansom BT to you, John, asking around the virtual expedition. How does this networking element work with it out with it being virtual i imagine it's around breakout rooms and things like that but i'll hand that over to you john okay and i'm and i'm not sure i am the best person to answer that from from what i understand and to be honest with you dan i think it's kind of uh been uh, sort of developed in a bit more detail kind of as as we speak there's a variety of solutions theaters um, that they're putting in place around particular themes. So there are opportunities for people to be uh, sort of presenting into that. I know, and I will hand over in a minute to Nicole Ballantyne because she's got a very exciting offer that could be relevant to some of you today uh, around Innovation Alley. Um, but my, I, I'm a kind of assuming that there will be sessions around there that will involve breakout rooms, people putting profiles and looking to connect with people that are involved in that uh, event. But I would go on to the... Uh, uh, the Digital Manufacturing Week website and the Smart Factory Expo section and just navigate around that. If I remember rightly, I think a fair amount of it is, is um, free of charge uh, to, uh, to register. It's a great opportunity. If you've never been to the event before, I think they've run it for three years up in Liverpool, so great to have it here in the Northwest. Uh, and obviously this is the first year where they will uh, go uh, virtual. Nicole, I don't know if you can uh, sh share any more information about Smart Factory Expo and obviously particularly what you're doing as part of uh, Innovation Alley. Yeah, I can share with you what I know um, in that it's free to go to Digital Manufacturing Week during the week uh, for manufacturers, but um, for um, uh, solution providers, um, I think that there is a, a fee to that. Um, on the Friday of Digital Manufacturing Week, which is Friday the 13th, um, there is the Emerging Technology Show. So um, over the past couple of years, um, the Digital Manufacturing Week has had Innovation Alley running right through the centre, which has been young companies under five years old and up to 10 employees. Um, and um, that, so we're continuing that theme, but instead of being um, in the show itself, We've got a whole day. So the Friday the 13th is the Emerging Technology Show. So if you're a technology provider or you know any technology providers who have got a digital solution for manufacturers to improve productivity, um, I've put the link in the chat um, and it's free to attend. In terms of networking um, on that Friday, there will be breakout rooms, um, but each person that gets a place at, at the Emerging Tech Show has a 40 minute pitch that will be repeated twice during the day um, as well to, to um, explain what their products and services and then effectively they will have a virtual stand so people, uh, manufacturers can come to them and talk to them direct. That's brilliant, Nicole, thanks very much indeed. I don't know if you can possibly just sort of put up again, just so people don't, don't have to sort of trail back through the, the chat thread, but if you can just put up the information, there we go, fantastic. Um, then, uh, there's the, the link with the information that you need uh, to get involved in that emerging, emerging technology showcase on Friday, November uh, the 13th. So thanks very much indeed for that. Uh, Sarah, mm -hmm. is there anything else on the chat thread to share? I think um, I've seen no, no, some, no, some no. connecting up already, which is 
fantastic to see. Yeah, it's really great to see everyone making great connections. There's no other Q&A at the moment, um, but if there's anything else, please post on there and I will share it with everybody at the end. Great, thank you. And remember, last chance if you want to pitch. Uh, we're going into our final section now. So next up is uh, Sam Briggs from Starling Solutions. Thank you, John. Uh, it's great to see so many, uh, so many other tech companies all in one place that serve in the manufacturing industry. Um, so I'm Sam from Starling, um, and we see loads of manufacturers that are still reliant on manual, base, manual Excel-based training matrices and printed procedures, such as work instructions and standard operating procedures. Uh, it comes with lots of issues, documents get lost, they become out of date, version control leads to non-confirmities in audits and that causes significant issues. So we offer a digital platform to automate the process. Um, procedures follow a simple step-by-step -step format including videos and photos uh, to boost understanding and training. And by putting the, the procedures and training into the same platform, we can automate the training process um, to ensure that training records are always up to date. Um, uh, ultimately, Starling can be used to drive process improvement and reduce rejects. Uh, one of our customers recently used Starling to help regain control of one area of the business where rejects were running high. Uh, as a result, they recorded a 70% drop in their reject rate. Uh, we've also discovered a couple of unexpected benefits of Starling during the, the pandemic. Um, Starling has enabled customers to increase uh, the number of staff working from home. Uh, and reduce person-to-person -person contact through self-learning. Uh, so if you've got any questions, feel free to get in touch. Um, we can arrange software demos and offer a free 30-day trial. Uh, we've also recently launched a reseller network, uh, working with other providers and consultants to add value to their existing customer base. Thanks. That's great, Sam. Uh, fantastic to have you with us. So really interesting, all about, in this case, kind of uh, automation solutions, focus around training and people and helping companies improve productivity around that area and obviously uh, a reseller opportunity. So if you think that that might be relevant to you in terms of working with Sam and his colleagues at uh, Starling Solutions uh, and to help them take their solutions out to the manufacturing sector, that would be great. Uh, next up, we have Sarah Duff from uh, Smart Manufacturer. Yes, thank you, John. It's Sarah Duff. Uh, Beg your pardon, Sarah. Sarah. Don't worry, I've had years. I was about to give my age away then, but many years of being called various forms, but it's, uh, it's Sarah. So um, I'm Sarah Duff from Smart Manufacture, and quite simply, what we do is what it says on the tin. We help manufacturers work smarter. So we primarily work with SMEs to help them streamline and automate their processes in the cloud, um, to help them reduce costs, drive operational efficiencies, and to support working practices. So we partner with a number of best of breed software developers who provide cost-effective and most importantly, user-friendly applications in key areas uh, of ERP, CRM, e-commerce, and QHSE compliance management. The latter is associated with the other side of the business uh, in smart quality, which is where we help SMEs implement and maintain ISO standards. Um, however, we firmly believe it's not just about putting in software. We've seen examples, sadly, of SMEs who've um, sunk um, £10,000 into software that was never fully scoped or implemented properly. So for us, it's all about um, making sure that the processes are aligned um, correctly. So we're consultancy led. We always start with an understanding of the business. What are the key challenges that that manufacturer is facing? Some of those challenges um, have been around um, time to get quotes out, um, lack of capacity management. So we provide an end to end solution from consultancy through implementation, through to training and providing the end user support. So Sarada, smart manufacturer, we're all about helping manufacturers work smarter. That's great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, so here we've got to, you know, great expertise in terms of software development capabilities and looking to work, um, you know, very uh, interactively with manufacturers to develop the right solutions that they need to manage their ERP, the CRM, the smart quality systems, whatever it might be. So that's something where you're thinking, actually, we, we need something which is not an off the shelf solution, but something which is kind of quite bespoke to um, our particular processes and operations. Please talk to Sarah 
uh, Sarah Duff from Smart Manufacturer. Uh, next up, we have uh, Sarah Jane Paynes from Marks and Clark. Sarah Jane, are you there? Yes, sorry, I think I was muted there, my mistake. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, John. So uh, Marks and Clark are a full service intellectual property law firm. Um, so we have expertise in all aspects of intellectual property, including patents, trademarks, design rights and copyrights. We also have in-house intellectual property solicitors that can help with things like contracts, uh, licensing of your IP rights, non-disclosure agreements um, and registering transactions when you're um, buying or selling intellectual property. So. We can help you with all stages of intellectual property, right from initial invention capture all the way through to uh, drafting and prosecuting patent applications, registering trademarks for your branding, um, registering design rights, and also enforcing those rights. So if you think there's competitors out there that are um, infringing rights that you have on file, then we can help you in making sure that that infringement stops. Alternatively, if actually what you're concerned with is not uh, people infringing your rights, but that you may potentially, with a, a product that's about to launch, infringe somebody else's rights, we can conduct freedom to operate searches, which uh, will help clear the way so we can uh, make sure that, that your product can, can launch without, uh, without any fear of you uh, encroaching on somebody else's rights. Um, we're a gold partner here at Darsbury and we're, we deliver events ourselves sometimes. We're doing a webinar in a couple of weeks time. A couple of my colleagues will be speaking about IP and the new normal. So that's focusing on what businesses need to consider in this new time of everyone working remotely and uh, how that may affect uh, IP in your portfolio. So if you've got any questions at all relating to any aspect of intellectual property, please do get in touch. Thank you. That's great, Sarah Jane. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah, um, as we develop these new solutions and new services, there are IP opportunities, and actually, that's part of uh, creating value and protecting the value within your business. So, um, if you haven't taken a step back and just looked at what you've got and whether there are ways and means of uh, protecting that, and as I say, creating value for your business, which may be important uh, not only now but in the future, then please follow up with Sarah Jane Paynes from Marks and Clark. Uh, next, we have Tom McNamara from FreeUp. Tom, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much, John. So um, I'm from FreeUp, and FreeUp is a technology provider, and we provide solutions that help other companies make the transition into the IT space, because often the first hurdle is the most difficult. So we make a range of products, but the one that's most pertinent to these 90 seconds is our um, DAL digitizer. So this is basically a piece of technology which can um, automate the human activity of um, checking a dial. So if you have personnel that measure um, temperatures, pressures, volumes, flow rates, any information displayed on any brand of equipment or infrastructure um, through a dial, then we have technology that can retrofit onto that legacy equipment and basically um, capture information and put it online um, on the cloud. And then also through APIs, make it available in other systems as well. So this really allows you to kind of bring any old infrastructure into the IT age with no downtime, little retraining of staff, and also the um, modification is transferable and you can go kind of forwards or backwards. We are aiming to add an extra functionality. So doing alphanumeric readings, um, level, um, basically any kind of visual inspection. So what would be great from this event would be um, talking to anyone who has an interest in this, so has equipment that they'd want upgraded, or anyone actually to whom this information would be useful to then kind of direct the order that we make uh, modifications to our system in to basically kind of um, increase the value that we can create. Thank you much for your time, and I welcome any questions in the chat. Tom, that's great. That's uh, Tom McNamara from Free Up Limited. So uh, don't forget it, the Dial Digitizer, that's the technology that uh, Free Up have got. A uh, great solution just to tackling the, the, the age old problem of legacy equipment and what do you do with equipment that you're not going to replace, but actually you want to bring it into that digital world. So uh, if that sounds to be of interest to your processes or actually maybe um, you're looking at uh, clients that you're working with where Tom's uh, solution could be part of a, a, an overall solution, a bigger solution for that particular company, please follow up with Tom, Tom McNamara from Free Up Limited. Uh, and last, but by no means least, we have Willem Hion from Fractory. 
I'm hoping we have Willem. Willem, are you there? I don't see him. No. no. Okay. No. All Willem. right. Well, then we have come to the end, unless there is. Well, either anybody that I've missed, which hopefully I haven't done. I've been ticking you all off my list, so hopefully I've not missed anybody who was expecting to pitch. If so, please unmute yourself and, uh, and let me know. Okay, and a final shout out. Anybody want to do it? A, a last pitch. Uh, Alan Love, that's all right. Okay, well, I'm glad you, you, you helped me out there. I was thinking they're, they're leaving me hanging there. I don't know where I'm going to go next. <laughs> all right, the floor is yours. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just keep it really short and sweet. So um, we're an independent consultancy. We're not tied to any system. And that's why it's really um, interesting to meet all of you guys. Because um, what we do is we almost work like... Um, uh, a transplant IT department of, of great manufacturers who want to expand, but IT is starting to hold them back. And they're saying things like uh, they struggle to turn all the data in their business into meaningful information. They've got uh, legacy systems that they're not sure are fit for purpose or will scale. And sometimes they say that they're frustrated by overly manual processes that don't add any value and slow them down. Um, so we're completely solution agnostic. Maybe your solution is a good fit for our clients. Um, our project managers, business analysts and developers will choose what is best for our manufacturing clients and iteratively implement them for a series of mini projects. So that's us. Uh, well, do you want to just uh, give us your full name and your company name so people know who you are? Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? So it's Waleed <laughs> Shahada um, uh, and it's Fluid IT Consulting. That's brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so a, a great opportunity. Um, well, Lead and his colleagues have got clients that they're working with and the challenges about that IT adoption and maybe there are people, I'm sure there are people who have pitched today or uh, are in, the, uh, in the, uh, the attendees today who actually could be part of those solutions. So um, if that sounds of interest, please uh, link up with uh, Waleed and uh, start the conversation from there. So I'm making the assumption that there is nobody else who wants to pitch. So can I just say a big I, thank you? Can I have a one closing message? If that's all right. All right, go on, Batsy. Sure. Uh, so uh, we, as part of the Fit Factory brand launch, we have developed a new free digital fitness assessment tool. So any company that works in manufacturing can actually fill it in. And it'll ask you questions about your various manufacturing process. And at the end, it'll generate a roadmap which will, which, which basically allow, which basically prioritizes which processes you need to work on in terms of being digitally fit and improve productivity. And it also generates a benchmarking tool so you can compare yourselves against other companies who do manufacturing for each and every process. I'll put the link for the digital fitness assessment tool in the chat. Thank you. That's great. So a digital fitness mapping tool, uh, assess uh, where there may be sort of gaps in your uh, digital roadmap. Uh, Sarah, I'm going to... Oh, go on. The... Um, it's Caroline Wait. Freeman. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Caroline. Go ahead. Okay. Please introduce um, yourself. Yeah, so I've just been sitting watching all these brilliant pictures. Um, I work for RTC North. We are a government body. We have a contract to support SMEs um, who may have had uh, an Innovate UK grant, but not necessarily. We are looking for businesses who are showing high growth or even high growth potential. Um, we offer, there are about 30 Carolines out there um, with a, an absolute, I mean, my specialism is marketing, um, investor readiness, um, investor specialisms. I know also about IP, but there are, equally Caroline's out there who know about steel manufacturing and goodness knows what. So it's a shout out for anybody really to get in touch with me, Caroline Freeman, RTC North. There's a lot of funding out there. Um, all, all the businesses that we've seen today, I'm not saying everybody qualifies, um, but certainly a lot of them. I've, I've already messaged a few people on LinkedIn while we've been doing this. Um, but please do get in touch with me if you feel that uh, your business um, could, could 
benefit really from some some help so i just yeah thank you john it was a, a, right. a great thank morning thank you so much for no, ple pleasure caroline so that's caroline freeman from rtc north um you know part of the innovate uk family around innovation and growth services so fantastic support it's funded support so you don't have to pay anything either so caroline and her colleagues are paid for by the uk government and by european funding so if you're not familiar with what's available there then please follow up with caroline and i think there are other colleagues um on the uh, in the uh, the zoom call today as well yeah absolutely uh, when, shout out to wendy thank you um, so I'm assuming there are no more people wanting to pitch. No. <laughs> no. Can you hear me? In which case, I'm going to hand over to uh, to Sarah just for a final sort of catch up on the chat thread, and if there are any questions that people are asking. And no further questions. It was great pitches by everybody. Like I say, I will save the chat and share this with um, Sue. And if anybody wants um, a recording or the, the chat record, then we can send it out to, to everybody. Thanks, everyone. All right, that's great. Sarah uh, and Luke as well, thank you for your support through today. Also, a big thank you to, uh, to Emma Green, um, who has been kind of communicating and managing attendees and pitchers and also to Sue Davis, who has been uh, coordinating and ev managing everything on the Zoom call today to make it work uh, so smoothly. So thank you to everybody for the support uh, for that. And say again, big reminder about the Made Smarter program and LCR 4.0 Start. We've been sort of co-host with our sales site at Darsby for the business pitch event today. Um, so. Uh, if you're not familiar with those programs, please have a look at them. Madesmarter.uk, LCR4.uk are the websites to go and have a look at it. Don't forget about the Smart Factory Expo. Uh, and we will send out a link to the video recording. There's no need for people to uh, head off now. Um, we will be leaving the chat thread open uh, through till 11.30. So if there's people you want to follow up with or people that you wanted to talk to, but you can't remember who they were, um we will be staying online to help you with all of that so uh big thank you to everybody thank you to the pictures have a great day and look forward to seeing you hopefully sometime soon take care now thanks john <laughs>